Hello folks and welcome back. So in last video, we already installed Docker. Now before proceeding further, we need to understand the Docker architecture and the various components which are being involved. Docker follows a simple client server architecture where you have a host OS layer over which the Docker daemon is running. The client may or may not run on the same layer. So it's not mandatory. Now, if a Docker user want to interact with the daemon or want to issue any commands to the Docker daemon, they need to take care of use of Docker client. So it simply makes an this API calls to the Docker daemon. The calls can be made over a Unix socket or over a network interface card. There are various method by which it makes its call. It can be through a CLI method using Docker commands. You can have a Docker file option. Also, you can make remote API calls like you have a Kubernetes cluster and on top of that, it manages Docker or a GitHub repository where when you change the code, the calls are being made. So in this scenario, so we simply assume that you want to build a container. So your Docker client simply issues a call to the Docker daemon. Uh, at that point, I will say Docker engine. So the Docker daemon accept those API calls and it start looking into its local database if they have the required image available for a container to run. Now, if the image is there, it will simply build a container out of that. But there can be a scenario that the image you requested is not there. So it will start looking into the registries. The registries can be public as well as well as the private one. So public registry is simply called as Docker Hub. While with your system or your company requirements, you need to configure a private registry as well, where the calls need to be go to a particular server hosting those images. Now, once the image is available to, or it's searchable basically, it start downloading to your local system. And once the image is downloaded, it will issue a new container. It will build a new container for you. There are some things which we have not discussed. We will uh, like the volume, the networking, the compute, what it will take when a container is built. We will discuss it further in the section. So this is a simple high level diagram of the steps of action that happens when you simply run a Docker command, a Docker run or something like that. Now proceeding to the various components, which we saw in the last diagram, starting with the images, they are simply a read only templates. It contains some binary codes, which is required for a particular process to run. You can simply download an image from the Docker hub and run a container out of it. Or you can, there are various methods. You can build your own image, or you can also build some add-on features on the top of a downloaded image and run a container. So it's not that big in size like an ISO because uh, it simply contains the code that is being required. Mostly um, the libraries or the other stuff is being shared by the local Docker system. Now the container thing, it is the end result of an image. So you can simply consider it as an isolated C group or namespace combination. So as, as a simple box, it is running and doing the work which is being designed for. It has a small compute, a small storage, a networking, and uh, it's also sharing the libraries which we uh, discussed earlier to perform its function. Now coming to the registry part, that is the most common and the most important thing. The images need to lie over here. Now the image, uh, or you can have your simple system, Linux system or any other system where the images are being downloaded and you can simply mark it as a registry, which we are also going to discuss later in this course. And you can start pulling the images from there. Now there were some several add-ons which I told earlier, which were not uh, we we didn't discuss while uh, creating a container, but that are required whenever you build a container, you need to provide it some space that can come from your local Docker system or can from a remote storage. It also needs some compute, the CPU, the memory, the network cards that you need to share to share from your local system. Also, there are options a Docker file where you can simply reference an image, and then you can start putting some extra options that need to be, it's just like an icing on the cake before the final delivery. So it will simply uh, add on all the things, combine it, and 
just build a container out of that and the most important networking because without networking you will not be able to communicate or even the docker containers will not be able to communicate with each other so that's all is from my end in this video and i will hope that you too enjoyed this section in the same manner i put my efforts to create this thankful always for being such a nice audience have a nice day bye bye